Namaste. So now we're going to talk about the Devi Mahatmyam and how we're going to study it and practice it to get the full benefits. Now we talked about the benefits last time in this video. And this time I want to go into how we're actually going to present it and what it all means and like that. <laughs> So in North India, Devi Mahatmyam is known as Durga Saptashati. Durga Saptashati and Devi Mahatmyam are exactly the same books. And it's composed of 13 chapters in, divided into three parts. The first part is about Mahakali and that's called the Pratama Charitra. And this is basically about the Tamoguna, the mode of ignorance. And this is one chapter long. Then the next part is called the Madhyama Charitra, the middle part. And this is about Mahalakshmi and the Rajoguna. And this part is three chapters long. And then the final part is called Uttama Charitra, and it's about Maha Saraswati. And this is about Sattva Guna, and it's nine chapters long. And it's very interesting, mathematically. Three to the zero power is one. So the first part is one chapter. Three to the first power is three. So the next part has three chapters, and three squared, three to the second power, is nine. So the third part has nine chapters. See, everything in the Vedic literatures is deep, very deep meanings, and they have correlatives in math and science and all different fields, because this is the essential knowledge. This is the knowledge about actually how the universe is created and how it's built, how it works. And that's why chanting these prayers gives unparalleled benefits. Now, I should mention that, uh, I actually mentioned it last time, but I'll say it again, that this prayer is from the Markandeya Purana. And Markandeya was a great sage who lived through the universal dissolution and witnessed the recreation of the universe. And so then he talks about it in the Markandeya Purana. And this Durga Saptashati or Devi Mahatmyam is from that Purana, Markandeya's Purana. And basically, it occurs in the context of a story. And the story is that this king gets cheated out of his kingdom by being betrayed by his relatives and ministers. And so he has to leave on the pretext of a hunting trip. He runs off because he can't, he can't beat these people. They got him surrounded. And he finds himself in the hermitage of a sage deep in the forest. So the sage gives him shelter and he's staying there and walking around in the forest. And he comes across another man who happens to be a merchant, a Vaishya. And he asks for the other man's story. And he also has a similar story that his relatives cheated him out of all his money and business crashed and wife left him and he was just so humiliated that he ran off to the forest. So they're both feeling very much depressed. And so they go to the sage and ask for advice. And they ask him, why is it that even though our rascal relatives cheated us, we still care for them? and we want the best for them. So how can we both get justice and fairness and get back what's rightfully ours 
and also benefit our relatives who are bereft of knowledge and have bad character and so on. So the sage begins to tell them the story basically of Chandi. Chandi is the original form of the goddess, Mahalakshmi. And Mahalakshmi or Mahasaraswati or Mahakali, uh, she's all three in one, appears in the beginning of the universe as the first knowable manifestation in the creation. This is one of the things that Markandeya observed, that prior to, the, to her appearance, the universe is inconceivable. It's simply Brahman. And Brahman is, of course, uh, non-conceptual. Uh, you can't describe it. You can't name it, really. It has no form, no qualities, no boundaries of any kind. There's only one. Everything is one. Huh? <laughs> so in that state, there is no differentiation. There is no difference between the subject and the object because only the subject exists. So at the very first moment of creation, Brahman forms the desire which is called Sankalpa, or Icha Shakti. And that Sankalpa, that desire is, let me become many. Huh? He is one. He is everything. He is all of that is. But he wants to become many. So, of course, the only way this is possible is through an illusion, because Brahman is always one. <laughs> so the whole manifestation is an illusion. Mahamaya. Maya means that which is not. So just like an illusion, like a magician creates an illusion, or just like we may see a mirage in the desert, it looks real, but we know it has to be false. Still, even to great sages and demigods, the world appears real. So how is this going on? How does this happen? And the answer to this is through Maya, Mahalakshmi, Mahasaraswati, Mahakali, uh, in her different forms, innumerable forms, innumerable Shaktis that are emitted by her to take care of different aspects of the creation. So she is the universal mother. Even the forms of Vishnu and Shiva come from her. Uh, this is admitted in the scriptures. You should read them. <laughs> oh, by the way, I put a link in the video description for the download of the complete Durga Saptash Shati or uh, Devi Mahatmyam. So you should read it because in the future episodes, we're going to be going through the chapters and chanting them and then going over the meaning. So the king and the merchant, the sage begins to tell them this story, how the universe is created, you know, everything from the Markandeya Purana about the subtle manifestation and then the gross manifestation. So they start asking questions. Well, how do we know that this goddess is actually supreme? And then he starts to tell the story of how she vanquished so many demons. And this is really the bulk of the narration in the Devi Mahatmyam. So we're going to go into this and you're going to hear all of this and it's you're going to be manifested in all details. But I just want to give you a heads up first. And we're going to be learning how to chant it and do this as a form of sadhana. And as a form of sadhana, it yields unparalleled benefits, which we went over in the last video. So anyway, make a long story short. <laughs> Each shloka 
of the Devi Mahatmyam is a powerful mantra in itself. And so if you chant them as mantras, especially if you chant the original Sanskrit, even if you don't know the meaning, you still get the benefit. Although, of course, to know the meaning is highly recommended and even more beneficial. You get the results quicker. So we went over last time how to chant this uh, great mantra for different effects, like three times if you need a royal benefit or a one time, you know, just for the removal of sorrows and diseases and stuff like that. So if you really want to get the benefit, you have to chant it not all, not all by itself, but with certain preliminaries. And the, the most important preliminary is called nyasa. Remember, we discussed in many different videos how when the kundalini rises, she does so because the energy channels in the body are cleansed. The nadis uh, are clean and unobstructed. So you might want to ask, although nobody did, this always blows my mind, you know. I'll say something far out like that. You have to cleanse the nadis, you know, the, the Ida, Pingala, and Shushumna nadis for the Kundalini to rise. And when you do, then she rises effortlessly. Nobody asked the question, how do you clean and open the nadis? Like, duh? See, there are certain confidential topics that are only given upon inquiry. Because you have to have an interest level high enough to approach your teacher and ask. So, duh. <laughs> the answer is to open up the nadis and to bring all the chakras into alignment and to bring them to their highest energy level. Huh? You know, there are so many videos on the internet about this kind of stuff. And they're all completely bogus. <laughs> See, this is Maya. This is Maya. This is illusion. Right? She creates so much false knowledge that you have to be very discriminating. Actually, you have to have a guru to know what is true and what is false. So the guru, original guru, is the Vedic scriptures. And the Vedas are saying, you have to chant these prayers. And we went over the matrika. Huh? So there's a, a ritual called matrika nyasa, where you chant the matrika and perform other things too. And we'll show you what these are. Uh, but you have to study, you know, you have to do the work. Then you can easily open up the nadis and kundalini becomes fully available and participates even. Like, I can't tell you, over the last couple of days, I've been working intensively with this material. And it's like I'm hooked up to a live wire. I have so much energy, you know, and my body, I was having some lower back problems and this and that. All that cleared up within a matter of days just from working with these materials, huh? this Durga Saptasati or Devi Mahatmya. So if it works simply by editing it and, and hearing it and working with the recordings and so on, imagine how it works when you do the full ceremony. So this is what we're going to be covering in the days and weeks ahead to help you attain the greatest benefit of human life. Aung Tatsa, Aung Shakti Aung.